You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, And Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at Fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, get ready to hit the option block. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for the option block. Everyone's favorite. I know it's my favorite. Hopefully it's your favorite bi-weekly source for all things options related. My name is Mark Longo. And if I sound a little bit different because I'm not coming at you from our studio in Chicago, I'm actually at a conference not too far away from the studio, but still beaming in remotely. So if I sound a little bit different, uh, that is why. And of course, you guys can still join us at our usual time, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, every Monday and Thursday and get those questions. And we do love to hear from you guys. And joining me on the old program today, let's go back. Let's go in order of newness of nicknames. And so if we have that that means I can only be referring to one person. Of course, <laughs> we are joined once again by the last emperor, Mr. Constantine, holding down the strategy desk over there at at uh, the active trader desk at Fidelity. Constantine, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you so much. Hello, hello. Great to be back, guys. Thank you yeah, for you having are- me on. I'm already hearing some uh, some bitterness behind the scenes from your your Fidelity hot seat cohorts that they don't have cool nicknames. Yeah, yes, no, the the Princept is pretty nice. I, I wish that was my the Princeps Constantine. <laughs> That's right. There are many, there are many ways. There are many ways you can go with that one. That tinny voice means we are joined as always by the Greasy Meatball, Mr. Meatball. How are you doing? Are you uh, are you down the street from me here, or are you out in the burbs? Where are you today, sir? I am down the street from you. I am. Uh, at you, what you might call the Rome of option trading, downtown <laughs> yes. Chicago. All all markets lead to Chicago when it comes to options. <laughs> I like that. That's not that's not a bad. There are worse sayings. I like that. A local exchange should perhaps adopt that. See, look at the branding expertise that comes out on a program like this. And I think we'll be joined in a little bit by Uncle Mike Tussaw. He is busy rolling some puts. Uh, for some clients, so we will let him join us when he's ready. You know, gotta get the gotta get the clients' rolls in first. Meanwhile, though, let's keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we talk about surprise, surprise, what the heck is trading? And right now, listeners, it's an interesting day. We're seeing a little bit more, uh, shall we say, uh, joint movement on the in the broad indices 
than we've seen in a little bit. You know, lately we've been talking about one index is up slightly, one's down slightly, one's kind of in the middle. On today, they're all mostly up, if not exactly knocking the cover off the ball. It's still a pretty decent day for the Bulls. Dow up about tenth of a percent, a little bit north of that. That's kind of the laggard of the bunch. Uh, the S and P and Nasdaq both up about a quarter of a percent. So seeing a nice little lift out there today. Uh, VIX Cash was flirting around the 13 handle. Coming into showtime, now coming off a little bit off about around about 12.75 or so. So puts it pretty much in line with where we were uh, last show, maybe off uh, a tenth of a handle, something on that range. But not a huge movement out there in VIX cash land. And since we're talking VIX cash and he's down the street, so I can actually hear him echoing right from his offices here. I'm a little bit closer to you, Mark, than I normally am. Uh, so what uh, what's cooking in the land of the pit today and in Carmen line, sir? Well, you know, there was a uh, Bloomberg article over the weekend about how um, VIX short exposure as a percentage of open interest by speculators is uh, is getting back to uh, to highs from um, from right before we kind of tanked in uh, 2018. And ah. that's been kind of the, the buzz, if you will, Uh what I say is, well, it's interesting that we're coming off a weekend and the VIX is basically flat. Tells me that, you know, maybe got a little overbid on Friday and they're kind of taking it to it today. But, you know, uh, hopefully at some point we'll get an opportunity to, to, to chit chat about about that article in Bloomberg because I think there are some pieces that were maybe a little misleading about what was written and and what that actually meant. You know, I'm, I'm at a I'm at a RIA conference right now, so most of the talk is asset managers growing AUM, building your practice. But someone did throw up a few charts and slides about volatility, and they were referring to Chris Cole as the as the brightest bulb in the volatility space in terms of uh, and knowledge of that. I thought it was kind of interesting. I like Chris; he's been on networks before. Uh, he does he does speak from a certain perspective, shall we say? <laughs> he has he has a definite book, and he likes to talk it up, and he likes to point out the uh, the dangers and the moral hazards of uh, of the short ball trade shall we say uh but uh, interesting stuff and maybe he i didn't see the piece maybe he was quoted in that bloomberg piece you know when you're when you're talking the moral hazards of shorting volatility he's usually one of the first guys people talk to uh, but know, yeah i do he, want to get he, to that oh good yeah he he was not um quoted in that what i what i thought was interesting is that yeah you know it to me it seems like what we've got here currently is a lack of longs not a lack not a an abundance of shorts VIX open interest is actually what 250,000 futures less than it was in um, 2000 at that point in 2018. You got the VIX was at 10, and we had open interest of almost 700,000 contracts. Here we got the VIX around 13. Open interest is about 450,000. That that to me, when you combine that with how flat the back end of the curve is, what does that tell me? That tells me there's not a lot of hedging and maybe the back end to steepen up the curve and, you know, and at the same time you have kind of the normal amount of, of people shorting that, that may that front month to cash index spread and that cash index to um, the future spread pretty wide, right? A point and a half with three weeks is not exactly, you know, it's, it, that's not exactly saying oversold by any means. So, I think what you have is a lack of of the other side stepping in and being long. And then the other piece they leave out, look at how very long, I was about to use a different term, uh, VXX is as a net. There's a huge yes. amount of, of long open huge, interest in VXX. Huge, long open interest in VXX, so, which is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. So, you know, when you look at things as a whole and in the, in the entire, as a part of the, enti- uh, the entirety, I am not nearly as convinced that we have a impending volpocalypse as uh, the Bloomberg piece attempts well, to uh, to well, push. Financial Times Financial Times told us like a year ago, right? The answer to that question, which is no one just no one wants to get long volatility futures anymore. There's no market for it. That's what they were saying. Remember, they said, "Oh, no one wants to buy these things anymore." They maybe left out things like XIV and others kind of getting wiped off the board, which took out a lot of the futures. I don't have the futures open interest in front of me. I do have the options, and the options we've been talking about for a while in VIX land have been pretty light. Uh, the ADV is shy of half a million contracts, which is pretty light 
uh, for this time of year. It usually takes a little bit longer in the seasonality, shall we say, for it to drift down that low. So it, it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing that reflected longer term in the in the in the futures as well. And that also usually that's where the institutional, you know, the insurance funds and everyone else is coming to play. Usually in that portion of the curve, right? And sounds like maybe they're not not, uh, not coming to play in as much size as they were, which I think is interesting. I think we could talk about this for quite a while. We have to we'll have to get into this more on ball view. So stay tuned for that. We'll be coming at you from the options industry conference later this week, listeners. So Mark, we'll have to find a way to beam you in uh, remotely, hopefully, to uh, that show. That should be a good one. We'll try I'll to figure get, it out. We're going to try to get our boy Mr. Rhodes in there. If not for that, then for at least Twifo. We're going to get the uh, Simon live in person. Uh, not from Sydney, but actually in person in Miami, I think. So that should be a, that should be a lot of fun, vol talk there. Uh, speaking of fun talk, uh, Constantine, a lot of things are obviously lighting it up over there. A lot of things moving and shaking with the market moving today. What are the Fidelity folks, what are they slinging, what are they keeping an eye on today, sir? Yeah, so guys, I'm looking at uh, orders by Fidelity customers right now, claiming the leaderboard here today, Tesla, um, by far. So... Uh, Never heard of it. What is it? What is that? Is that some sort of electrical thing? They make electricity? Some sort of some sort of a something. That's right. So um, up uh, about two percent has been meandering around this level for quite uh, quite a few hours here since since it opened up. Um, two thousand one hundred thirty seven buys to one thousand two hundred twenty two sells right now. So around sixty four percent of the buy side, thirty six percent of the sell side. Um, second one on the list that I noticed was Disney. That one is interesting. Uh, also is leaning to the long side here, 69% buys, 31% sells. Um, that stock had a, a bit of a range today, actually. It uh, opened out, opened up out of the gate, uh, was up about 1.8% uh, on the open and just gave all of it up, uh, actually went negative uh, to be down about 1.5% on the day. And now here we are at 1.13 in the afternoon, and we're unched. Um, so that, that one had an interesting range. We'll see how that one behaves uh, into the close here. But the one that actually caught my eye, guys, uh, something that um, I found interesting and is actually moving uh, quite substantially, it's in the financial space. So I was looking at Bank of America, BAC. Um, we are um, here at Fidelity at least seeing by Fidelity customers, 63% sells to 37% buys as of right now. But listen, let's talk about the financials, right? The, the third a largest sector in the S&P 500. Uh, I believe uh, my last check was around 13% of the S&P. Um, you know, it's only preceded by healthcare and, and technology. So a very large sector, about seven and a quarter trillion dollars in market cap. Um, for those of you who are following along, on your platforms, if you want to chart that index, the S&P 500 Financials Index, that is GSPF. Um, if you're using a Fidelity platform, you just put a dot in front of it, right? Uh, but overall, the sector is up nicely today. Um, was up about 1.17% 1, 1. Um, the last time I looked at it. And Bank of America is actually up uh, a lot more, right? 2.37%. Uh, today, it since the trough on the 26th of December, um, stock is up 36%. So it's outperforming the S&P. Um, I believe that the S&P from that December 26th trough is up about 25%. So it's definitely showing some relative strength. Um, it's now trading above, you know, short, intermediate, and long-term moving averages, the 2050 and 200. Um, as you guys know, banks report first, right? So they already went. Um, Bank of America reported on the 16th of April, traded sideways there for about a week at around the $30 mark. Uh, didn't do much. And here we are today. It's up nicely on, I would say, an otherwise probably pretty dull tape. Uh, challenging prices that we haven't seen since uh, August and September of 2018. So, so has the uh, action yeah. been like uh, call overwriting then primarily, you know, the in terms of kind of the action you're seeing from your customers? Is it is that where that, you know, is that where a lot of the sales are being generated? Um, so, so, Mark, that that's a good point. So on the options uh, side, what we're seeing today, it's actually trading about 2.8 calls to uh, to every put, uh, traded a total of 310,000 uh, volume. 90-day average volume is 256,000, and you know so we a still busy have day. a couple. Absolutely, we still have a couple hours to go. So 
uh, it, it's probably going to blow that average number out of the water. Um, what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of um, just on an options chain here, um, looking out to January 17 uh, of 2020, those 32 strikes traded 42,560 contracts, uh, 161,000 open interest. So it would be interesting to take a look and see how much of this is actually opening uh, opening trades. Um, we'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that uh, on the opening rotation tomorrow for that open interest update. Jan, uh, Jan continues to fascinate everybody and all the names. Tesla, you name it. Everyone wants to go out and play in Tesla. play in Jan. <laughs> we'll get to all of that. We got some listening mail. I think about that. Did you do your? Have you, did you ever do your one by two, sir? No, I have. What was it? Five ten. You wanted I'm, to get paid like twenty I'm cents gonna, to do it. <laughs> but I just have not done it yet. I will. Pay me There's another eleven hundred on the tape this, today. By the way, of I the believe. tens. I believe it. I thought that was you. I thought that was you legging into no, one by two. No, no, I wish, but uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> those are, uh, you know, those have uh, those traded all the way up to 22 cents being bought. Um, so there is uh, there is some uh, some price. Dubious... No price for those things almost surprises me. We watched them over the course of the last year and a half go from 30 cents to almost three dollars. Remember, uh, yeah. very little, not a huge price movement. All big, all skew, just kind of kicking in. Uh, that was that was pretty impressive. For anyone who wants an education and just how much things outside of Delta can impact the price of far out of money options, go look at the history of those uh, those ten handle and fifty handle uh, Tesla puts over the course of the last couple of years. Speaking of rolling puts and babysitting them, I think he's finally done. Uncle Mike, sir, are you there? Are you done rolling all your puts? I am. I am here, excited, ready for a new show. How's everybody doing today? Let me guess. You were you were busy at work on your two year silver collar. That that's what had to be what it was, right? <laughs> no, but it, but but earlier in the day, I did get filled on a short call, on, on closing out of a short call on one of my longer term collars. So you're close. You have more two year collars than just silver. Uh, well, the no, 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 the, the the silver one on one of my collar strategies with silver. One of the short calls got. Uh, filled for uh, just I got out of it like nine pennies or something like that but just a old GTC order that I had on it so I uh, did get out on that but um, but yeah one thing the exciting news about today I haven't been able to say this in a while never before in the history of the entire stock market has there <laughs> ever been a better time to sell than today we are at new all-time highs in the S&P 500 right now so oh, I miss this speech Mike <laughs> it feels good to say, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I missed this one. I've not it heard this been one a while. in a long time. Been a while. Um, it, is. So. it has. So I think that uh, it just, of, of course, I always want to follow that up with. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, in the future, looking back, it might not be the best time to sell. I'm just saying mathematically, there's never been a better time to sell because uh, we're at all-time highs. So with that being said, uh, a lot of things going on today. XLF is definitely the leading sector in the market. Or the financials are definitely the leading sector in the marketplace today. Uh, I think that uh, that is a good sign for us bulls in the marketplace. Uh, however, I do think that uh, the fact that we are up roughly, uh, we're, we're up close to 20, per, we're probably up oh, probably about 18% on the year right now, if you want to count where we started the year at. Oh, granted, we had the dip and uh, late fall last year to factor in, but the fact that we have had such a huge rally uh, for the first few months of months of this year, uh, I'm personally I am still bullish on this. However, just because we have moved so far so fast, I do think it would be foolish not to uh, factor in some type of risk management at this stage in terms of rolling up long calls, maybe selling some calls on some long stocks that you have, that you have some appreciation on, rolling up some long puts to protect yourself even more. Nothing too crazy. You can still be a bull by all means. I know I am. But uh, no matter what, I don't care how good your indicators are, how good your feelings are on the market, whatever the case may be, risk management always, in my opinion, 100% of the time, needs to come before uh, what your indicators are and what your market sentiments are. Uh, so yeah, we have that going on. Um, Gold and silver are pulling back a little bit, so we are going to, they're out around the lower levels of where they've been these last few weeks, so curious to see if they can, uh, the support will hold. Uh, so far today it has, but uh, curious to see if that will continue. Uh, of course, XLF being the big one, Mark has already discussed the, the VIX, and uh, 
I just got, I'm all full of endorphins because I haven't got to say my all-time high speech in a while. I'm excited. That's why I saved you for last. I know you were bottling that one up and you've been saving it for, for quite a while, sir. So uh, congratulations. I'm glad you can get that off your chest. Let's see what else is tearing it up here uh, in the markets today. We mentioned coming in today that the VIX futures open interest was light. VIX volume today overall is still light. Uh, today, about 167,000 contracts on the tape. ADV now well shy of half a million, about 458,000 uh, contracts ADV. So uh, if you follow VIX, usually you know it's a lot higher than that. So uh, things are kind of quiet out there, not just in the futures. Uh, but in the options as well. Moving on to some other names, SPY. Let's see what SPY is up to today. A little bit north of 1 million, about 1.2 million coming into showtime. And the ADV out there is about a little bit north of two, about 2.2 million or so. So about a million off uh, the ADV coming into showtime has a chance to at least make that one. Let's look at some of the other names that have been popping off uh, here. Listing, you know, we've had some new names listing in the options market of late, which is always fun. New names. Everyone likes gets excited to sink their teeth and to trade in some new stuff with some IPOs. Uh, I'll leave the discussion of more names going public now without any earnings than back in the dot-com bubble. We'll leave that discussion for another day. That was just a big topic of a session not too long ago at this conference I was at. But we've seen some new names listing like Pinterest. A uh, hot one out there with the craft side of the space, particularly a lot of ladies like to do a lot of crafting stuff. Seems like Pinterest is, is just huge in that world. Uh, not so huge yet in the options world. Coming into Showtime, they're about 31 and a half on the underlying. So a decent day for them. They're up nearly 6% coming into today. So big swing for them. The options not really lighting it up. Looks like the total OI is only about 20,000. Granted, they haven't been trading for too long. Uh, but still, the big position out there is 1,500 of the May 32 calls. And it looks like 1,300 of them opened on Friday. So that's a pretty new position. So uh, some near upside now pretty much at the money calls are dominating the tape out there. And then it kind of falls off 1,000 of the May 30s. And that's pretty much it. Everything else open is under 1,000. Again, only total of about 20,000 contracts open. Let's get the lift. They've been around for a couple of weeks now. They're the comparative veterans in the options IPO space. They're coming in showtime. They were about 57 and change. Uh, they were kind of slightly off a little bit on the day, but not a huge move for them. So you know, compared to what we've seen out there from them of late, the big position out there are still those uh, OX 62 halves. I believe we talked about those a couple of weeks ago when they opened nearly about a little over 11,000 of those open. Now that's pretty much far, pretty far away from the number two, which are the June par calls. There's a little bit shy of 10,000 of those 9,600 of those total OI outstanding of 270,000 contracts. So this one's a trader. This one's been actually doing some decent papers since it listed. It wasn't like a, a bubble of trading that first day. Then it kind of went away. Uh, so Lyft has continued to do some uh, paper. The other big name kind of think surprised a lot of people coming out of kind of left field was it was Zoom Video. Now, who thought that IPO would be would be tearing it up? Coming into showtime today, there were 66 and a half, uh, up slightly on the day as well. This is another one that's only been trading for a little while. Not exactly dominating the tape of late yet. Looks like the biggest position out there, about 800 of the May 80s. So those are about 15, 14, 15 handles out of the money calls, uh, which is kind of interesting, maybe a little bit of optimism out there in well, you know old. why you know why it rallied the way it did is because we recently switched to zoom as our primary primary um meeting media and webinar uh, uh from oh, you switched off you switched off webex yeah we're done with webex done with go to meeting uh zoom it, it, to be fair zoom is a million times better than any of the existing technology that was out there um, I just figured it's because everyone knew that we record all of our stuff on Zoom recorders, even though it's oh. not an affiliated company. It's a, it's a fun name, so I like to say. It's yes. Like, so, I, well, the, the, I think the hilarious piece about that is that there is, you know, their ticker is ZM. There actually already was a stock called Zoom, Z O O M. And yes, it was which I looked, like, I looked up first when I started looking for them. I said, wait a minute, this doesn't seem like this is what I want. The same day <laughs> yes. as their IPO. Everyone did what I did, they looked up Zoom. Some of the dummies realize, what? oh, wait, this is not the same company. Uh, just goes to show you, um, at least have some semblance of thought and intelligence before you push by people, and uh, you'll, be, you'll be happy. But uh, we definitely had kind of the uh, moron trade of the week last week was when, uh, or two weeks ago was when investors uh, bought ZOOM stock when uh, ZM was the, the Zoom uh, meeting space uh, ticker. Yeah, the first ticker, the first clue should be when you can see a multi-year chart on a company that's IPOing today. That's usually, yeah. that's usually a good, a good that sign that, it, that you're in the wrong name out there. Sometimes, uh, you know, people are, uh, yeah. tend to be, that's, a, that's kind of a lemmingy trade, right? Oh, look it, how much it's up. That must be it. 
It must be. Constantine Guys, has this, this, this oh, thing sorry, has been ahead. trading at a penny um, at the end of March, right? And I think the high of the uh, day on the IPO day, I think that, that was that Thursday, right? It was $5.76. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That's amazing. I should have shorted the bananas out of that thing. Stupid yeah, thing. You know, forget, forget crypto and Bitcoin. The big move in Zoom is what everyone should be, uh, should be talking about out there. Constantino, these names... You know the Pinterests, the Lifts, these these hot IPOs, the Zooms. Are they? I mean, there's still some of them still doing some decent options paper. Are they continuing to resonate with the Fidelity clientele, or have they already moved on to the next big thing? Um, Pinterest is on the board. Uh, it's actually number seven uh, on the board for us. I am not seeing Lift here. Actually, no, Lift is 27th. So it, it did make the top uh, top 30, but uh, yeah, probably not as much as they were out of the gate. Yeah. That's that's kind of it's always a what have you done for me lately market. They want the next hot thing. Everyone's waiting for, you know, if they have Lyft, they want Uber. They want whatever else the next hot thing is. And so that's uh, OK. But that's how I was surprised. I mean, what other social media companies are going to be coming out uh, uh, besides Pinterest? Right. We've got every major every major kind of social thing. Yeah, they're all is, pretty much out there now. Snap's is out, out there, out there now, right? Out Snapchat there, you know, is out, out there and, you know, seems to be the, the bastard of, of the group. Uh, you know, then you've got kind of Pinterest and Twitter, which are maybe kind of the secondary players. Then you've got the behemoth in the room at, at Facebook, and and that's about it. But I think everybody's out there. So Except pretty much all the oxygen in the room. Everyone was just waiting for Zoom video. Now we can all move on. That was the one that. Well, no, was. I you know, excuse me, I forgot Google Circles. <laughs> yes, the old uh, or the old. They, but, they, but they delisted Google Plus. That was the one. Yes, that's the yeah. one they got rid of. Uh, so, yes, interesting stuff. And everyone's waiting for us to keep on rolling right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. that one a little old school throwing us a little old school uh loop there in the studio i like it welcome to the odd block the portion of the show where we get weird we get weirder than we just did listeners don't worry a lot more weirdness to come uh <laughs> we profile some of the weird activity that is lighting it up out there today let's kick things off i know names everyone wants to talk about today it's hig everyone's got it on their brains of course it's the Hartford Financial. What well, we got you covered. Hartford Financial coming into showtime today was a little bit shy of 52, right on 51.93 or so, up about you know, not not quite a percent, about three quarters of a percent. Not a bad day, underlying wise, uh, but that's not what caught our eye. Uh, but before we get to that, of course, ticker symbol HIG. Let's look back at them over the course of the last year before we tell you what came across our radar today. This is the name that's had an interesting run. They got up to about 54 and change, looks like, back uh, in uh, about a year ago. And then they kind of, like everything else, trended down towards the nadir that was Christmas Eve. And then uh, bouncing back up now to where they are a little bit north of 50, about 50, almost 52. So it's kind of been uh, bouncing off and bouncing back up, kind of net on the year, not quite unched, but close to it. Uh, over here on the year. So it's kind of been a dead money year for people holding HIG. Let's see what our option scans have prevailed upon us today. It looks like, again, pretty light day, so we're not seeing huge 100,000 blocks. This one's 5,000. This time of the good old June doubles, June 55 calls. These things are pretty wide coming out, which, again, not surprising given the name we're talking about. There were 37 cents at 71. <laughs> That's a pretty wide market. Uh, these calls went up at, uh, where was the price here? 60, I just had it here for a minute ago. These calls went up on the, on the, near the offer here uh, for, I don't have the price here anymore. I just lost it, but it was close to the offer. So let's just say they were near, I think they were like 67 cents, 65 cents, somewhere in that area. Clearly uh, buying these bad boys. Also worth noting that these are opening, uh, opening over there on the Philly. So, Mr. Meatball, let's see. Let's kick things off here. Stocks at round 52. We got someone coming in pretty near term, pretty slightly upside. Seems like pretty uh, straightforward, odd block stuff. People like the name. They want to get a little bit long, and they're doing it out to June. What's your spidey sense telling you about this one, sir? Uh-oh, he's muted. Listeners, this is one of the rare times where Mr. Meatball is muted. Are you there, sir? I know. Well, I know you're at this conference, so I've got to make sure that uh... – no, I don't want to get uh, get you in trouble. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that's exactly what the, the story is. This is some uh, interesting upside action. But, 
you know, my guess, my guess is, is that, uh, you know, it's either some sort of covered call or just a June play on the underlying rallying earnings are uh, on the first. So, you know, it could be, uh, could be either. Could be either. And I'm going to lead towards someone has a little bit of the old love here for Hartford financial. And it's an interesting play because they are, they are kind of ret- retracing back to where they were a year ago. So, mm-hmm. Uh, not exactly Probably, the name you, you, you just never know with yeah, how it's not a name you, spell. you're looking at to deliver a ton of upside here, and yet that seems to be what our friend here wants and wants it in the next couple of months. So we'll keep an eye on this one. Let's move on to our next name. Uh, this is Nordstrom's. I haven't talked Nordstrom. I know you're a oh, big retail fan, Mr. 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 Meatball. So we'll get a little Nordstrom. Oh, that must be why this print's but, going up. You know, they yeah, saw you stop my, just, my, just, my wife just spent a hundred dollars <laughs> on, yes. on, uh, on, Two things yes. of uh, of uh, what's what do you, Alicia? What do you call that cream? The foundation. She literally spent a hundred dollars on foundation go. yesterday. I'm bullish there Nordstrom. <laughs> there you go. See, you spend all the money, and that's uh, that's what caused it. What we saw today was we'll say Nordstrom, of course, ticker symbol JWN. Coming at showtime was about forty one, off about half a buck or so on the day, right on one percent. Uh, let's see what caught our eye. Before we even get to that, let's look about over the last year. This is another one's kind of had an interesting run. A year ago, it was trading about 10 handles north of where it is right now, right around 50. And then they rallied up to a little bit north of it's like 65 or so in that range or so before trending right back down uh, in the latter portion of the year to pretty much where they are right now, right around 41 again. So they're kind of on the lower end, uh, pretty much at the bottom, actually, of their 52-week range. Let's see what our eye of Sauron uh, picked up out here. It was on the put side. Go figure. It was the May 39 puts uh, going up this time almost 5,000 times, 4,557 times on the bid right around there for uh, right around 36 cents or so, nearly 5,000 times. Also opening uh, here on the day. So what we got here? 39. Interesting. I think Mr. Me- Mr. Rock Lobster, I should say, he would like this one. He likes himself a little bit of line in the sand puts. These are pretty near term. It's yeah. not that far off the bottom of the range. So I guess someone's saying, you know, if it does break through there, they wouldn't mind owning it at below the 52 week range. I think Mr. Me- Mr. Rock Lobster would like this one. What do you think of this one, Mr. Meatball? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it clearly is a, uh, a put sale and they're looking to uh, either collect the premium or take delivery. Uh, obviously that. And uh, again, if my if, if, uh, if my wife can spend a hundred dollars on foundation, then uh, you should tip you willing. I would, you know, th- obviously this is not endorsement. I'm making a joke, but uh, my wife can spend a hundred dollars on foundation. I can spend thirty nine dollars on uh, on JWN. I think you could do it. They should have the seven indicator there when they watch <laughs> your wife. Going in to the front door, nor they know there's a floor there in the stock. Yes, they, exactly. As soon as Lauren buy walks in, buy. Yes. yes, exactly. No. Absolutely, buy it. <laughs> Maybe that's what someone was doing. They were watching the front door and they hit the mm-hmm. puts as soon as she walked mm-hmm. in the door. There we go. I, I've, <laughs> I've seen worse trades, shall we say? Now I know we're hitting some hot names here. We're hitting Nordstroms. We're hitting Hig. You can't talk those other big names without talking our final name, Mr. Meatball. I, kn- I know you know what it is. It's rolling off the tip of your tongue, but our listeners may need it a little bit of help. Of course, I'm talking Q-R-T-E-A. Everyone knows this name, right? This is this is hot stuff here. This is, in case you're wondering, this is Curate Retail Inc. R- this is the Series A. This is a Series A here for Curate Retail Inc. <laughs> Trading right now, $17.18, down about a dime or so. About half a half a percent to your What is terms. the symbol of this thing? Q R T E A. That's I'm guessing this Portia. is one you have not seen before. Curtia, no. yes. Curtia. Yes. See, there you go. We're we're doing our job here if we're surprising you on a regular basis. Hopefully we're surprising you tomorrow. Let's just show it is. For how far af- abroad we go, listeners, to find Curate. It's short for they, it's it's curate retail. So it's Get it, get it. So it's a curate. Oh, I didn't of, even, I didn't even notice that. I called it karate, curate. Yeah, You're right. no, That's it's get it, curate, and but what's with a Q? Really uh, cute. If this was really wasn't cute, people. Deep, deep in the weeds enough. This is the series A on top of it, so it's all sorts of fun. That's why it's got the A there, listeners. Uh, but yeah, what do we have going on today? We had some splits of the May 17 half puts. Uh, actually, before I get that, I should tell you what the hell things have been trading here. A year ago, it was trading north of where it is now, about seven handles north, around 24. Then it kind of looks like it vacillated around that level for the better part of the year before dripping dripping back down, down the 20 handle, shy of that, right around January of this year. And now it's broken through that again to the downside. We're trading, like I said, about $17. So not exactly a good upside year here for a Curate or Curtia as the ticker symbol would like to be. So what do we see? I'm going to guess. 
I'm going to guess it was puts, and that was exactly what we saw. The May 17 halves so are now in the money puts, going up 5,000 times. They were 90 cents at a buck. They went up on splits for 95 and a buck, pretty much 2,500 times each. So doing that pretty much 97 half on the splits there. So someone buying some puts on a name that's kind of been beaten up, Mr. Meatball. Not exactly uh, terribly surprising there. What, you, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, it appears that that is the case there. It, you know, a decent amount of open interest in that May contract for this one. You know, uh, for a name I've never heard of, there are 10,000 open on the 15 strike and puts. There are 12,000 open on the 17 and a half calls. And there are already 4,300 of these puts open on uh, the May 17 and a half. So um, Huge, I think that's surprising. These, actually. Yeah, surprising given I've never heard of the company before. But, uh, you know, that that is... Uh, Likely opening would be my, my guess. That seems opening. And so there you go, listeners. You learn about a new name and maybe some opening downside in a name that has been taking a beating of late. We always love to surprise you and indeed surprise the meatball with the names that we find. And I think uh, Curate, a.k.a. everyone's favorite, Curate, is uh, definitely <laughs> definitely falling in that category. Curate today. is one of uh, one of Constantine's uh, leaders of the Praetorian Prefect. There you go. The, I don't the know if you knew that. Guard, the Viking guard that, guard, <laughs> that guarded Constantine. <laughs> Of the last emperor. Before we get Constantine into any more trouble, let's keep on rolling into our next segment. It's, it's Monday. It's time to talk a little bit of strategy. It is time to open up the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the strategy block, the portion of the show where we surprise, surprise, break down some strategies. Constantine, I know you got some earning straddles on your brain this week. This is this is good because we didn't have a chance to talk about them in the trading block. But we'll, I'll get to some in a little bit in the around the block segment. It is earnings season. It is a big time for everyone to start looking at and analyzing and trading straddles. Of course, we have all that information if you want it, listeners, for free over there on the optionsinsider.com. Just click on over, click on the earnings move and earnings move results reports courtesy of our friends over there at Orets, and you'll get to see all this fun stuff. And Mr. Constantine, if they are going to do that, I'm going to learn about things like implied move and implied volatility. What should they know about straddles going into earnings, sir? Yeah, guys, I, I uh, have been speaking to quite a few customers as of late uh, on the strategy desk, and the questions are about the expected move of stock going into earnings. Now, it doesn't surprise me, like you said, we are definitely in the midst of the earnings season. Uh, there are plenty of S&P 500 companies uh, still to report. So um, what do we normally look at when we look at a price of a straddle? Um, going back to basics here, what's a straddle, right? A cost of a put and a cost of a call at the money or as close to at the money as you could possibly get to. Now, in terms of expirations, um, you're looking at um, the expiration that is right after earnings uh, but as close to it as possible, right? Now, an example. Today, we have a massive market capitalization company uh, reporting Alphabet, right? So if you look at either GOG or GOGL, uh, whichever one is your preference, whether you're trading A shares or not, um, they have earnings after the close today. And yet, since we don't currently have dailies, the only closest expiration is May 3rd, right? Um, so the May 3rd, straddle uh, at $283, $85. Uh, it's currently trading for $44. Bucks, okay? Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So if we had daily expirations, uh, there would always obviously be a perfect expected move straddle. But we don't have dailies, uh, not yet anyway. I don't know if you guys are hearing um, some rumblings about that changing anytime soon. So we have to extrapolate. Now, the closest thing we'll ever get is kind of options that expire every day, which we're getting close to an SPX, right? Like mm -hmm. I was telling, uh, talking to uh, my director of operations, and there are four SPX expirations this week. There's one today. There's one tomorrow. There's one Wednesday. There's one Friday. It's amazing. Sorry, I just wanted to chime in there. We're, we're pretty – in some of the big indexes, we're already pretty close to dailies, but I don't know if it will ever come to uh, to equities. So, sorry, America. No, no, perfect. That, that's exactly yeah. what I was looking at, looking for. So, if, if that straddle is pricing 44 bucks, 
you have to understand that that's not the expected move, right? Because you have four days of trading still um, after. So you have to extrapolate that number somehow. Um, there isn't uh, going to be a perfect calculation, obviously, because we know that extrinsic value or time value does not decay linearly uh, going into earnings. Um, I believe that there are some circumstances where it actually stops decaying, right, for uh, uh, going into, into expiration. But the extrapolation that I personally do, kind of rule of thumb, uh, what I generally do is, is if I have a whole week ahead of me, I look at a straddle um, out a week. So the difference between May 10th straddle in Google um, versus May 3rd. And if we, uh, if we look out uh, um, to May 10th, it's trading at around um, $51, $52, right? So the difference is around seven bucks um, out an extra week. So what I normally do is I, I take out that $7 uh, of extrinsic value for for a week out of this May 3rd one and basically we end up uh, with the expected move of around 36 bucks, right? Um, there are some other rules of thumb, you know, some folks like to take a percentage of that expected move. Um, obviously, you have to just put your thinking hat on and, and understand how many days do I have between now and expiration? Uh, when does it expire? Like I mentioned, obviously not a perfect way, but if you did it the way I just explained, um, you're basically averaging out right around 80% uh, of, of the straddle price. Any thoughts on that, guys? Uncle Mike, you don't usually, we don't usually talk straddles for you in the strategy block, but are you, uh, are you a big, I mean, do you use them as indicators? I know you don't trade them, but do you use them as indicators with your clients of what things might be pricing in going forward? Yeah, it's, sometimes we do. Uh, so you know, one of these days, I just want to come out here on the strategy block and just recommend everyone to sell a short straddle just to freak everyone out. I bet that would make the ratings go up just out of you the shop. You do that. that. That would be huge. And that would also be <laughs> have to be your last day on the show, unfortunately. <laughs> good point. Good point. <laughs> um, but no, we, we look at them. So like in the triple income strategy, for example, where we're selling covered calls for clients, uh, if we're already long a stock, and we're somewhat bullish on it, let's say, <clears throat> and we want to uh, have a little bit of potential upside and we want to sell an out-of-the-money covered call, one thing that we like to do, and it's never a perfect scenario with it, but one thing that we'll do, let's say we're looking to go a month out on the covered call, we'll look and see what the price of the straddle is. So, for example, let's say the stock's trading at $60 a share uh, and the straddle one month out is trading at $5.00 then we would look to sell the $65 covered call a lot of times as, as kind of just a general indicator. Um, I think it's a much simpler way than looking at uh, one standard deviation or two standard deviations out. Uh, to me, just look at what the actual price is. And uh, that's uh, pretty, uh, it's, it's, it's um, I wouldn't say it's a, a guaranteed indicator of what the movement will actually be, because every time we do the show on, on, around earnings, we always say, oh, this uh, beat the straddle, this didn't beat the straddle. So it could be right, it could be wrong. But what I like about it is it gives you the idea of what people who have actual real money in these options or in these stocks believe that the market's going to do. So all of a sudden, let's say that we have a one-month straddle on Tesla trading at a dollar, it's not going to stay at a dollar for very long because everyone's going to buy that straddle uh, very quickly and bid the price up to, up on that. Uh, if for whatever reason we had a uh, $9 straddle on a stock that's costing $10 per share, then there's something going on or there's a reason that it is that high. So I think it's a good way to get a general gauge of what might be going on uh, to see why is that the case. And then when you actually see uh, why certain things are doing what they're doing, uh, you can actually come back to say, okay, well, that's priced into the straddle. And if it's priced into the straddle, uh, then you know that the big money, so to speak, is seeing the same things that you are. So definitely like looking at them uh, in terms of, of trading them. Uh, it's been, I don't know if I've done more than four long straddles in my life. And I don't even know if I've ever even done a short straddle, quite honestly, with no other components to it. Yeah, you know, I think they definitely their their value lies in many things, including in the information, which is why we put that up for all the earnings names. You know, it's I think it's there's a lot of value in seeing that. Of course, when I was out in the S and things, we'd always get straddle runs just to, just to kind of give you the lay of the land of what people are pricing in across the term structures. There's a lot of value in knowing what they are and understanding how they work, even if you don't trade them 
Uh, so I definitely encourage you listeners uh, to listen to what Constantine said. And then, of course, check out those earnings move and earnings move reports and earnings move results reports. Easy for me to say over there at theoptionsinsider.com. Meanwhile, we got a little bit of time left, so let's keep on rolling. Answer some of your questions. It's time to keep on going right on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Mail Block, the portion of the show where you guys take the reins, questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom, all that good stuff. You know how to hit us up, theoptionsinsider.com, add options on most of the major social media venues, just the old-fashioned way, questions at theoptionsinsider.com. Even send a carrier pigeon to the studio here. We take them all. We also ask you guys questions every now and then. Last week, we asked you guys, hey, you know, all this talk about the mystery puts in Tesla, uh, all shy of the 100 handle for the most part, a lot of it by Jan, if not sooner, expiration. So we thought we'd ask you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think, given all the OI out there, is that OI correct? Will Tesla be below 100 by January expiration, and the overwhelming about two-thirds of you uh, pretty much came down on the no side, so saying that to open interest, at least in and of itself, at face value, is is not indicative of where you think Tesla is going to go. Obviously, we've talked before about what other reasons people have to put those puts on, including Mr. Meatball doing his one-by-two. I can't wait for the update on that one pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, two thirds no, one third yes. Uh, this week we're asking you. It's you know it's it's rock'em sock'em time. It's earnings season. Big names continue to be on the docket this week, including big names like Google, the fruit company, GE, McDonald's, all these big names. Uh, so we thought we'd ask you guys easily, which ones are you guys looking forward to trading the most this week? He gave you four choices. Again, they limit us on Twitter. You can only do four. So we gave you GE, gave you the fruit company, gave you Google. And then we gave you good old Mickey D's, kind of mixing it up a little bit. So not all tech names. I don't know. You guys have a pick for – I'll have to look and see what the results are. Which one do you guys – if you guys have a pick, I'll certainly like to hear it. Then more importantly, what do you think our audience is picking while I look up the live results? This is went live a little bit for showtime, so it's still early days here. Uh, let's start with uh, – let's go to Mr. Meatball. Sir, what do, you, which, do you have a pick? And if so, which one is it? And also, which one do you think our audience is picking, sir, while I find the actual numbers here? Mm. Ah, interesting. I don't know, man. That was GE, Apple, Google, and McDonald's, just to refresh your mind. I think Apple, for sure. A safe bet, an interesting bet. I'm looking at the numbers right now. I won't confirm or deny. Uh, let's go to let's go back the the other way. Let's go to Constantine. Which one do you think our audience is picking, sir? Um, I would. I mean, I would say most probably Google, if I had to guess. I mean, obviously they're pretty heavyweight. They're smaller than Apple, but not by much. Um, and it is a couple of bucks shy of the 52 week highs, uh, unlike Apple. So, um, mm. I think that probably would be the one is Google L AKA alphabet. Is that a, uh, is that a hot name with the fidelity clientele these days? Um, it was not actually on the board, um, on my earlier look i can take a look at it one more time here no us. no I, I i pretty much expected that it seems like alphabet has kind of ever since they made that switch to alphabet they've kind of fallen off a little bit in terms of interest certainly in terms of vol. they confuse uh, people yeah and, well, I, and I also help. think guys that it, it, it probably you know obviously per per share cost right i mean you know it's 1300 dollar stock um, yeah so. yeah uncle mike do you have do you have a vote which one i think you're going to say fruit company but I'll, I'll let you say it if you like uh, I, how can I not say the fruit company? I've, I've, there's no stock I've given more airtime to this sh- on this that's, show to than the true. fruit company. At least so they no stock it. recently. Yes, yes, that's true. No stock in recent, except for silver and your silver collar, of course, which continues to of dominate course. all of your mind. Silver, mind silver right? collar was a band from the 90s, weren't they? Yes, <laughs> along with mini metals. They opened for the mini metals. Yeah, there uh, you go. No, that's... I thought they, they opened up for Slate in the early 80s, I thought. Did there they? You. With the run, run away? Even better. Well, I'm looking here at the early voting. Again, this is early, early hours. It looks like Apple is taking it. Nearly half of the vote. GE, close number two. They were fighting with Apple for a while. They're only about a third of the vote now. Uh, Goog L, a.k.a. Alphabets, only paltry 13%. And Mickey D, 7%. So kind of breaking down the way I thought. I thought GE might be more competitive than you'd assume, given especially what's going on out there of late. And uh, that seems to be the case. So this might be a little bit of a GE, GE, their motto could be GE. We're so crappy, you care about us again. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it is. For traders, when's the last time until the last few months, people all of a sudden talking about GE again? Uh, before then, when did traders ever 
give a crap about GE, right? They didn't. They never. Uh, and yeah. all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're lighting it up. It's dominating our top 10. Uh, half the time we're talking about it. So, yeah, all they had to do was cut, what, a third of their workforce? That's all. Yeah. They're really easy, easy stuff. Sell some key businesses uh, that, that actually yeah. make money, you know. Yeah. Why would you want to keep the good stuff? Keep the crap. Sell the good stuff. That, that's exactly. the model for success, is it not? Uh, I'm looking here. We got Stadini in the chat. He's chiming in. 65 cents. I'm not sure. Oh, I think he's referring to uh, the trade we had in the odd block where I was trying to figure out what the price of it was. I said 67. No, 65. You're right, Stadini. Uh, listeners, on the ball, as always. That's why I love you guys. Yeah, that, that print came up like a half a second after I mentioned that I, I saw the actual price. It was 65 cents. So you were correct there, sir. Well done. See, keeping us on our toes. That's why we like you guys. Um, let's see here. Oh, the important question. AGDC wants to know, how much did you guys love Endgame? Avengers Endgame. I have to say, just to give you a little anecdotal reference, off the top of the billion plus dollars I made in the box office and everything else. I'm at this conference today. I'm out. It's one of the session breaks early in the morning. People, you know, it's a big conference. People talking about gaining AUM and all these things. I go out to the uh, to the to the coffee break area to get a beverage, and what do I hear? A whole group of people gathered around talking about not AUM, not volatile, not stuff. Hey, did you see Avengers Endgame? How awesome was it? So that was my little anecdotal. Even in these sort of professional environs here, uh, it is uh, it is dominating uh, dominating conversation. Uh, I will give you my short review. I saw it. It was awesome. Bit of a tearjerker. Bring. I haven't seen so many grown men shedding tears in a theater since probably like maybe back in the Gladiator days. This one. This is the man cry movie. Grown men will go to this and they will weep openly at this movie. So just be prepared for that. If you're bring the tissues. <laughs> Don't bring a date if you want to impress her on this one. This is not the one to do that <laughs> with your level of manliness. Unless you want to impress her with your feelings. And, hey, go ahead. Uh, maybe that might be uh, might be your way. To... And you guys see it? Not you yet. Know, gonna, not I'm going to – I've got to, you know, i got to wait until uh, – so I probably have to see it twice. First, I have to go by myself or with a friend, and then I have to take my kid once I approve that he's allowed to see it. Go by yourself, bring the, so you can weep openly by yourself and no one will see you. And then go nice. with your kid and you can stoic stone face. All right. Well, maybe I'll go with you. Yeah. It was so that, way you when I'm, uh, that way I can get a hug from you when I need it. Yeah, you might need a hug after this one. This is one of those ones where if you grew up watching, reading about these characters as a kid and stuff like that, and seeing the final chapter is, uh, it's going it's, to, unless you have a stone cold dead heart like the last emperor, of course, nothing makes him cry, right? Um, I haven't seen it. A um, couple of buddies of mine went to see it this weekend. Uh, really enjoyed it, looks like. So, you know, from what I heard, uh, I think that, you know, that probably had to do something with the effect of uh, of, of the stock action uh, in Disney today. But, you know, like like I mentioned earlier in the program, I mean, it is unched on the day. Had a quite a range there. Uh, close well, you got to gotta, you gotta think, how much of that one, you know, who wasn't expecting them to blow the doors off? Yeah. The thing priced in. Uh, mm-hmm. I would have faded that knee-jerk uh, rally, and then I would have faded the knee-jerk sell-off. Uh, so now the question is, how much can uh, Captain Marvel and her, her wily gang of new Avengers uh, soak up all of the... All yeah, that's the, the question, uh, right? The how much of this love is going to carry Iron over uh, to, the new, to the new breed? That's Iron the Man. question. A big and question. You know, they, the they need to actually MCU. get somebody that knows how to do a reboot to fix the X-Men. They have it never once. Well, that's the hope, right? That's the hope. Now this part of the Fox family is part of Disney. They're hoping they could bring in Professor Xavier and his crew and yeah, do it right. The really decent X-Men movie was uh, had been the Wolverine ones. Not the first one, uh, oh. but the second one was pretty okay. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, the, the rest of the movie, of the, the, I mean, the, I mean, if you look at the first three, I mean, how cynical and awful and just yuck were the like the the first three? They were just terrible, and then and we're so off of and then you get kind of the new class or the the young people, and that one was kind of stupid. But the only one that has been any good had been Deadpool and uh, and the Wolverine movie, where Wolverine, spoiler alert, gets killed, which we didn't think was possible. Oh, the, the Logan one, yeah, the third, yeah, that was a crazy one. People like that one. Pretty good. Yeah, that's about the only decent one with that that has come out that I've I've really liked. What was the actually? There was one in between, not the stupid one with, with um, the first Deadpool in it, but uh, the one in between. Well, there was a samurai. One. Yeah, the, the, the Wolverine. One. Yes, that was an, that was an interesting one too. What's the one yeah, so that, that that's the whole time. That's that the one's hope for the. Bad. 
right? The, the that, time that X-Men will come in. The X Men will come in and save the day in some capacity. Because I don't, I don't know. People, yes. people clearly like Black Panther, so that wouldn't work. Uh, I don't know if the rest have the and Spidey, of course. There's always Spidey to save the day as well. So yeah, between those two, Spider Man's been, uh, been decent since uh, the first three. I, I like the new ones better, but this we digress, Liz. See, this is why we need to have a we need to have an off-topic show on this network. Where we can get into all this fun stuff. I've often talked about doing a show called like Expiration Friday or something like that. You do it after the close on Friday. You can talk about for other things. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. We get a lot of questions. This. And they take they definitely take us off into fun tangents. Game of Thrones we could do we could do uh, clearly Endgame. I think just by the amount of grown men I've seen weeping over this film, I think this is going to have a lot of legs. This movie is going to be printing billions for many many uh, weeks and months to come. So uh, yeah, I think spoiler alert we all liked it, uh, if to different degrees. Uh, but don't plan anything big after you go see it. You need to kind of just sit back and and let it and let it, and di- and digest from it from a bit before you go do anything else. So uh, that'll be my my little bit of uh, of suggestion for you. But that last hour, just yeah, just mind blowing stuff that's going on there. All right, I can talk about that for hours. Let's keep on rolling though into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Around the Block, uh, the portion of the show where we go around the block to tell you what we're watching for uh, the rest of this week. There are a bunch of earnings still on the docket. We have uh, today, after the bell, good old Google, a.k.a. Alphabet. Tomorrow, we got GE. We got Mickey D's. We got uh, Merck, GM, and some fruit company. Wednesday, Qualcomm. Thursday, good old Activision Blizzard, good old ATBI. One of the best premium rides in the business for a long time. These days, not so much. And also Herbalife, a very contentious name. And Friday, a little name you may have heard of called the SIBO. Uh, let's go around the horn. Let's, let's go back the opposite of the way. Let's start with Uncle Mike and see what people have on their radar. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. Aside from adjusting your silver collar, what is on your radar, sir? Oh, and also calling for all-time highs. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, watching the earnings coming up this week, I think that's going to be the big news, just to make sure that uh, keeping an eye on a certain someone's Twitter account to make sure we have nothing macro that uh, outdoes the earnings. Uh, and also 3,000 in the S&P. Uh, we've broken through all new all-time highs. We'll see if we can close above them today. Uh, but we are just a little around, just a little over 50 points away from the 3,000 mark in the S&P. It's a uh, of course, a very key number. It's a very big, large round number, which numbers typically are very key to in markets. So we'll see where we're at with that, along with watching earnings and seeing if the metals can uh, hold their levels where they're at right now. I'm offended, sir. You keep saying you have to watch my Twitter account. But other than the rest of that, I, I can agree. Uh, outside of your constant monitoring of our social media, which is which is deep. Market intense. mover, Mark. <laughs> That's what they call me. Market mover, All Mark. right. And speaking of another Mark, who's not a market mover, but he makes that when he goes to Nordstrom's, then, of course, people pay attention. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir, uh, the date is rapidly approaching for your get your steak on the meatball. If I want to go do such a thing, where should I go? What should I do? Sir? Yeah, just, uh, you know, our big events coming up. Uh, we got a couple of slots open for the four day and plenty of room in the uh, the two day event. Go to And uh, it's right there. It says uh, come to our event in June and get yourself registered. You'll there you be go. Sorry if you don't. Optionpit.com. Is there a special URL for that, or just just go to the homepage they can find it? I will assume it is Optionpit.com. There we go. All right. And uh, and oh, and I forgot to ask you, Mr. Meatball, what are you watching for the rest of this week? Oh, I think we lost him. All right, listeners, I'll keep going then because that's my own fault. Getting out of my own my own uh, pattern here. I got people coming and going in this conference room here. But let's go out to Constantine, sir. What are you watching for the rest of this week? Yeah, guys, uh, I'm definitely going to be watching Google today. I mean, an $890 billion company, you can bet that it's probably going to have an effect on NASDAQ. NASDAQ uh, NDX, sticker symbol NDX, is hitting a new all-time high here. Um, So I'll be keeping an eye out on that. I am watching, uh, actually, the Chicago Boards of Options Exchange NASDAQ Volatility Index. Notice that VXN was up uh, 4.8%, around 75 cents there. Uh, to be trading at 16.54, so that's interesting to me. Um, and then, of course, on Wednesday, the Fed minutes come out, and we have a presser uh, at 2.30. So that's probably going to be a big event um, for the markets. We'll we'll have to wait and see, especially on the back of that high GDP print that we uh, saw last Friday, 3.2 percent quarter over quarter. What a beat that was! 
All right, that's going to do it for the Around the Blocks. Also going to do it for this episode of the Option Blog. But before we go, let me go back around the horn. Uh, we already hit on what the meatball has to do. Go to optionpit.com to learn more about his event. You can register. You can meet myself. You can meet the meatball. You can meet the rock lobster. Maybe Uncle Mike. Who knows? Maybe we'll even drag the last emperor out of Florida and get him up here uh, to uh, have some enjoy some sunshine in Chicago for a change, which is not the case right now, but I hear we'll be coming again one of these days. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is going on in the land of St. Charles? If I want to go I'll click on the fox, where should I go? What should I do? Sorts of fun stuff. If you want a financial advisor that uh, actually watches markets, well, if you are looking for a financial advisor that is not afraid of the word implied volatility, feel free to contact me. Visit my website for more information on that. I uh, would love to have a conversation uh, going into the summer months. Exciting markets that I think are going to become more exciting, but that's just my opinion. You know, the summertime, what's the old saying? Summertime is the hottest time, right? It's the best time to be trading. It's the most active time. Everything happens in the summer. That's the old adage, right? Of course, of course. Ah. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, Constantine, if people want to check out what's going on, they may want to kick the tires over there, Fidelity, learn about some options, maybe contact you guys at the Active Trader Desk. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, guys, um, if you're a Fidelity customer uh, already, you can obviously go to fidelity.com forward slash coaching to uh, see some of the stuff that uh, we do here on a daily basis. If you're not a Fidelity client, you can go to fidelity.com uh, forward slash options. Um, learn a little bit about what sets us apart from uh, our competitors out there. So um, be glad to talk to you um, in the near future. Hopefully we'll uh, get to chat more. There you go. Fidelity.com slash options is the place to go. Kick the tires, light the fires. If you become a client, you can call up and ask for the last emperor, and they'll direct you down to Constantine. And uh, the people on the desk will be, who are you talking about? <laughs> and then they'll, eventually they'll get the hang of it, and the rest of your co cohorts will be even more jealous than they already are at Constantine. And on behalf of the last emperor and the greasy meatball and Uncle Mike and myself, I want to thank all of you for downloading, streaming, subscribing, all the fun stuff that you do. Keep it coming. We'll see you back here on Thursday for more of the Option Block. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.